So in the last video, you learned about angular quantities and their uh, relation to linear quantities. Now we're going to actually link the two with equations so that you can um, look at situations in which you know some translational uh, things and some angular things and you can come to a conclusion about that situation. So I have a picture here of an object rotating in a circle. Notice that it has a radius r. And as it rotates, point P changes from here to here. And if we think about that point P, there are several things uh, that are true. First of all, it remains at a distance r from the center of the circle or the pivot. When it rotates an angle theta, uh, point P has moved a distance L. So we say that it subtends that length L. And we can write an equation for that. Um, remember that a radian is um, an angle that subtended by an arc equal to that radius. So for instance, um, theta equals L over R. And you should have learned this in math class, but we'll go over it again. Um, if L is equal to R, then theta is equal to one radian. And that's our definition of a radian. When um, we rotate P along and it has the disk has rotated an angle theta, if theta is equal to one radian, then the radius um, will be equal to this subtended arc L. So the length of those two things will be equal. So if I use that, uh, theta equals L over R, where L is the length of an arc subtended by this um, arm radius, then I can rearrange this and I can say that L is equal to R times theta. Now, we don't use L, we use X, because um, X is a displacement, and that's what we've used in the past uh, for translational motion. So if you think about P and how far P went um, along this arc, then we can say that that's a translational quantity. So we say that X is equal to R times theta. And this is an important equation for you to have. Uh, this is one of the places where things get tricky because if your calculator is not in radian mode, this equation won't work. Your calculator must be in radian mode in order for this equation to work. Now, um, we know that if I divide both sides by T, so I have X, equals r theta, and I divide both sides by t, I know that uh, displacement over time is equal to velocity, and theta over time is equal to angular velocity. So this equation becomes z equals r omega. And z and omega are vectors. I haven't been using my vector symbols in this. Um, We'll get to that later. And then once again, I can divide both of those sides by t. So I get z over t is equal to r times omega over t. And this part right here is angular acceleration. And this part right here is um, angular acceleration. Now we have to be careful here. This is tangential acceleration. So when we studied circular motion, you learned about radial acceleration and tangential acceleration. Um, well, let's write this equation, then we'll go back and look at the difference between those two. So we get tangential acceleration is equal to r times angular acceleration. So those three equations link our translational quantities and our rotational quantities. Uh, for you. 
let's real quick talk about the um, tangential and radial acceleration. When we were learning about circular motion, we learned that when something moves in a circle, it has to accelerate towards the middle. So there has to be a force and an acceleration towards the middle to cause it to turn. And that's called um, radial acceleration. And that causes turning. So it acts perpendicular to the velocity of the object. And um, it only acts to turn the object. So centripetal force, or radial force we talked about, uh, is equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration, or radial acceleration. So we use two names for this. When we were doing circular motion, we were talking about mostly constant circular motion. So circular motion at a constant speed. Now we're looking at situations in which things are speeding up. So there is a tangential acceleration, and we looked at this some um, when we were doing circular motion, you should remember. When I have a tangential acceleration, there's an acceleration that is directed uh, either there is a component, at least, that is parallel to the direction of motion of the velocity. And that causes the velocity, the, excuse me, the speed of the object that's moving in a circle or rotating to change. So this is tangential acceleration, which is important, and it's important to be able to make that distinction. So when we're talking about angular acceleration, something is uh, speeding up in its rate of rotation, we're talking about tangential acceleration in translational terms. Uh, so if I think about a particle on the edge of something that's rotating, that particle uh, gets faster and faster and faster in its speed. So it's covering more distance in every second as this object accelerates radially. Okay, so hopefully we remember the difference between those now. Um, so I want you to think about the equation v, v, equals r times omega. Um, if I have a constant angular velocity, so this uh, disk is spinning at a constant rate, and you think about placing uh, two, maybe this is a turntable, and you place two coins on the turntable. If I were to ask you which one of those coins is moving faster, hopefully you would say that this one on the outside moves faster. It has more distance to cover in the same amount of time. So when I go, when this rotates one time around, the one on the outside has to cover a distance equal to 2 pi r. Right? Well, the one on, or in the middle, more, covers a distance also of 2 pi r. But the radius of v is greater than the radius of a. So the circumference of, of the circle that a takes is smaller than the circumference of the circle that v takes. They do it in the same amount of time because they're on the same line here, on the same radius of this disk. And so therefore, uh, the angular, so the angular velocity is the same but their tangential velocity is not the same. So when we look at this equation up here, um, omega a, oh, let me switch that around so it's in the same order, omega b is equal to omega a, and therefore the velocity of b is greater than the velocity of A. So 
The last thing I have for you is a chart of uh, these quantities. This is from your book. And um, it basically tells you the, what type of quantity it is. So displacement or velocity or acceleration. And then it gives you the linear term and the rotational term. Um, and then it gives you the relation. So this is the important part over here, the part that's new from the last lecture. Notice that a couple of things that are important. First of all, this is tangential acceleration, not radial acceleration. So it's the acceleration that acts perpendicular to the radius of the circle. <coughs> also, and this is very, very, very important, you must be in radians. You must be in radians use these equations. If you are not in radians, it will not work. Um, so if you want to link a <coughs> translational quantity to a rotational quantity, you're going to use these equations. And um, that happens pretty often when we do our problems. Um, let's, let's try doing a problem, which I think I'm going to do in a different video. So uh, there you go. 